I'm Nate Snow, watching Government for Oil and Gas Journal in Washington, D.C. Many anticipated Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez's death from cancer. It still raised significant questions about what will happen next when it was officially announced on March 5th. Chief among these within the global oil community was how soon, or even whether, multinational oil companies, which once worked in the South American nation, might return, and whether those which are still there can or will remain. James R. Schlesinger, the former U.S. Defense and Energy Secretary, said several years ago that continuity matters among national oil companies, mid-level executives, more in world oil trade than top government leadership. The problem in Venezuela is that Chavez and his followers quickly began to use Petróleos de Venezuela S.A. to finance social reform. Seasoned PDVSA executives were among 18,000 workers fired in 2002 after nearly half the company's domestic employees walked off the job to protest Chavez's policies. Quote, in 2006, Chavez implemented the nationalization of oil exploration and production in Venezuela, mandating a renegotiation of a 60% minimum PDVSA share in projects, end quote, the U.S. Energy Information Administration said in an October 3, 2012 update of its report on the country. Sixteen firms, including Chevron and Shell, complied with new agreements, while Total and ENI were forcibly taken over, it continued. Venezuela is also increasing pressure on foreign operators that remain in the country to increase investment to offset recent production declines. EIA estimated that Venezuela produced 2.47 million barrels a day of crude, condensate, and natural gas liquids in 2011. The Maracaibo Basin remains its most prolific area, representing slightly less than half of its total output. But many of the country's oil fields are very mature, requiring heavy investment to maintain current capacity, EIA continued. Industry analysts estimate that PDVSA must spend some $3 billion each year just to maintain production levels at existing fields, given decline rates of at least 25%, it said. While Venezuela's relatively close proximity has helped it remain among the top foreign crude suppliers to the U.S., Imports from there have fallen in recent years, according to EIA. In 2011, the U.S. imported 951,000 barrels a day of crude oil and products from Venezuela, just 8.3% of its total petroleum imports, it said. That does not include 186,000 barrels a day of U.S. Virgin Islands products, which almost exclusively come from Venezuelan crude, EIA added. The country, consequently, has tried to diversify its petroleum export markets. China is one of its fastest-growing customers, from 19,000 barrels a day in 2005 to 230,000 barrels a day in 2011, EIA said. And PDVSA President, Rafael Ramirez said on January 21st that the National Oil Company is exploring cooperation with Russian oil consortium Rosneft. PDVSA's internal and managerial capabilities have deteriorated since 2002, according to Sarah A. Ladislaw, co-director of the Center for Strategic and International Studies, Energy and National Security Program, and CSIS Senior Vice President Frank A. Verastro, who holds the James R. Schlesinger Chair for Energy and Geopolitics there. 
Increasingly, PDVSA relies on contractors as well as other private company partners to keep the fields in production. But reports state that contractors have not been paid in months and that the political uncertainty in the country has even driven routine decision-making to a halt, they said in a March 6th commentary. PDVSA plans to increase its expenditures to $25 billion in 2013, Ramirez noted on March 1st, but Ladislaw and Verastro believe it will take more than higher outlays to correct the company's problems. Even under the best of circumstances, reform in the energy sector will take a long time to emerge, they maintained. The damage that has been done to not only PDVSA, but to the institutions of the state and civil society could take years to rehabilitate. That's watching government for this week. In Washington, I'm Nick Snow for Oil and Gas Journal.